says its policy of fighting corruption is non-negotiable. How successful has the President Mohammed Buhari government been in its quest to root out graft? That's our focus on the program tonight. Many thanks for joining in, everyone. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Imana Amawe. And now tonight, we continue our conversation on the anti-corruption war of the Buhari administration. One of the cardinal policies the president campaigned on during elections was the war against corruption. So much water has gone under the bridge with several recoveries by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the Senate report indicting the suspended SGF, and now we await the report by the Vice President's Committee investigating the mismanagement of the Presidential Initiative for the North East Fund and the NIA Director General's link to the 13 billion naira found in a residence in Ikoi. Well, let's get talking straight away. I'm joined from Abuja studio by a legal practitioner and a former member of the House of Representatives, Honorable West Idahosa. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Honorable West Idahosa, um, all eyes are on the three-man panel led by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. What, uh, what do you think will be the outcome of that panel? What's to be expected? Well, there cannot be accuracy in the prediction of what the panel may turn up, but there are a few indications that we can put together uh, arising from the evidence that is being flowing around. Uh, we do know that uh, the Senate committee report is largely loaded with documentary evidence. And as you do know, documentary evidence it's difficult to tell it lie against itself. And so uh, many of us do believe that um, there will be some very serious findings by that report. The other point is whether or not the report should be made public. Uh, a number of experts have said that the report should not be made public, no matter its outcome. Uh, I, am, I am worried whether that is the correct position to take at this time, uh, given the implication uh, of the corruption fight and given the momentum that followed the publicity on the setting up of the committee itself. It will appear to me that to continue to hide matters in the name of security will continue to undermine the war uh, against corruption. So uh, I expect the report to be made public. And I also expect the report to have some very far-reaching uh, comments All right, on uh, the findings of uh, that committee. Honorable Idahosa, you've mentioned that um, the Senate's report is based on thorough fact-finding. Shouldn't that report have been enough? Does this suggest some kind of distrust within the corridors of power, considering the fact that several committees or different two separate committees had to be set up to investigate a particular matter? Well, don't forget that there is separation of government, separation of uh, powers in the government that we operate, and notwithstanding the serious effect of the Senate report, the executive would still like to conduct its own investigations. I understand that they did ask for um, copies of the Senate report, and I am informed that they were duly made available. I expect that to be studied thoroughly by them. The Senate on its own can only operate within Section 88 and 89 of the Constitution. And after that, it will make its recommendations and it will be left for the executive uh, to abide by it. Ideally, where that report is strong enough, as indeed this one was, the executive ought to act on it. But because we are a growing democracy and because there is um, a struggle for supremacy by the arms of government, very often uh, the executive takes the other way once the Senate takes another decision. I'm glad to uh, see that at least uh, some suspensions were carried out and that some investigations are also going on following the Senate report. I think this is cooperative enough, a clear indication 
that we are getting it right. Okay, you're a lawyer, apart from being a member, a former lawmaker. What if the report comes out and it totally ex or somewhat exonerates the suspended SGF as the case is? Um, what's the implicate? What would be the implication, considering the fact that member of that panel, one, one of the members is the Attorney General of the Federation who had a previous report exonerating the SGF. Well, the truth is that the Attorney General ought to have recused himself, really. In an ideal society, he should have uh, declined participation, having come up with a public opinion on this matter in the past. It is likely uh, going to uh, be difficult uh, for him to say that he entered into these investigations without holding uh, a view on the matter. But notwithstanding that, the, president, the vice presidency uh, that is heading it, or the, pres the vice president himself heading it, gives a lot of credibility. Uh, he's shown so much integrity in the last couple of months in government that many are prepared to give that committee the benefit of doubt. And we do believe that under the headship of the vice president, it may be quite difficult to influence the committee against logic, against the evidence available before the committee, and against the run of play. Okay. Another thing lately that we've seen in the polity is a lot of high-profile cases that end up in um, bills and um, sometimes out, outright forfeiture of certain uh, monies recovered. Um, what happens? Uh, well, the Senate had recommended discipline for the suspended SGF. If he's found guilty at the end of all these investigations, is suspension punishment enough for the SGF? It, no, it cannot be because uh, if indeed he's found guilty, he would have been found guilty on probably a number of grounds. One, it may be a non compliance with due process, it may also be uh, outright corruption, and either way, uh, it's an offense against the law of the land. And the only way that justice can be served on him is for him to face trial uh, in accordance with the laws. Suspension definitely is a measure taken to ensure that he does not interfere with the investigations. So I believe that if he is indeed indicted, the appropriate thing to do in order to give momentum to the fight against corruption is to subject him uh, to due process by trying him like any other person that's been tried. If you can try the, the justice of the Supreme Court, former governors are fa facing trials, there is no reason whatsoever why the Secretary to the Government of the Federation should not be tried in order to send a clear signal uh, to the public that there is no secret cow in the fight against corruption. Honorable Idauza, um, some people out of the school of, there is a school of thought that the Buhari government's anti-corruption war is only successful on the media platform, that it's only gained media successes and not actually gained grounds. What's your position on this? Well, I, I don't think so. I think that on a number of fronts, it has um, been very effective. The first is that there is a, a national consciousness, that there is a paradigm shift in the corruption perception in the country. I mean, in the past, it did appear that we are, corruption was freely discussed on the table. But I can tell you comfortably that right now, corruption is discussed in the secret. And then secondly, the fact that um, a number of trials are going on is an indication uh, don't forget that even the Senate president is on trial. So if that happens, what more do you need the government to do to show that they mean business? What I think the problem is, is that they need to put up a crack legal team and they need to do uh, more investigations for uh, should before be after after people. Promo. The point is that they are not gaining enough victory in the courts. And this is not because they have not tried enough, but because they probably have not done enough of the right things. And this is where they need to improve their act and put their house in order.